Welcome to Brampton Focus. In 2015, the Liberals won the election with a majority, and one of their platform positions was electoral reform. Electoral reform could be here in 2019, from representational voting or ranked voting. My name is Michael A. Charbon. Next, we meet Pat McGrail from Fair Vote Peel to talk to us about electoral reform, right here on Brampton Focus. Welcome back to Brampton Focus. In 2019, the Liberals have propo proposed to have electoral reform. Well, what does that mean? Well, they're talking about more proportional representation. You see, in our 2015 vote, we have a population of 35 million people. 25 million people were on the voters list. Unfortunately, only 17 million people actually voted. 68.5% turnout. Unfortunately, the best since 1993. So we have a little bit of apathy. What a lot of people are saying is that your vote doesn't count, that someone can rule a majority government with under 38% of the majority vote. Is that fair? Where should we go with this? And what does proportional representation actually mean? We've brought in Pat McGrail here. Pat is uh, from Fair Vote Peel and is an advocate for proportional representation. And we're going to talk to her and find out a little bit more about what we can see coming in 2019. Pat, first of all, thank you for joining us on uh, Brampton Focus. Well, thank you for having me. So there are some people that say majority should rule. Um, the majority of the votes, regardless of how many are cast, that party should rule. There is another uh, contingent, particularly um, Fair Vote Peel, which you are involved with, who feel that because of the amount of people's vote which is not counted, those in the minority who did not uh, have the majority vote, that they're not being fairly represented. Give our folks at home a little bit of an idea of what a proportional representation could look like and what it is. Um, well, our biggest concern um, is that in the last election, you mentioned 17 million showed up at the polls, but over 9 million people elected no one. The ones that showed up out of those 51% elected no one. So those are the people that we're concerned about being represented. And it also means that it's difficult to hold a government accountable if most of the people's votes never elect anyone. I mean, it's, uh, you know, your vote is not it's kind of like a sledgehammer or not a sledgehammer like mittens to try and pick out a, a candidate um, what proportional representation would do is ensure that many more of those people would actually elect a representative so rather than having 51 percent that are now electing no one you may have 98 percent who are electing at least one MP. One of the problems is uh, you can't please all of the people all of the time. We already in Canada have five parties, uh, basically. If you look at the United States, they have a two-party system. Um, if you don't have some decisive direction, you're never going to get anything done. And unfortunately, the problem with politics is they love to talk. They love to talk amongst themselves. And uh, well, let's take the Green Party, for instance. Elizabeth May got her seat, and that was Vancouver West. For many people in Ontario, they could care less what Elizabeth May has to say. Others would say they do because it's the Green Party, it's for our environment. But if they don't assume the majority, why should they have a stake at the table? You say those, those other voters weren't representative. Why should majority not rule? Well, we're saying the majority is not ruling under our first past the post system. We'd actually like to change the system so there is a true majority ruling. And you, I mean, under there's over 90 countries that use proportional representation. And only in a few handful of them will you get these multiple parties that can't, um, you know, get their act together and, and make decisions. It works very well. So when you talk about the countries, I mean, Argentina, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Bulgaria, Colombia, none of these countries are major players. I mean, let's be real. Other than potentially Germany or Switzerland and Brazil to a certain extent, these are not major players. Many of them, too, when you look at Iceland, uh, Denmark, Finland, they're very so socialist countries. They have huge social uh, debt. Uh, whereas in North America, we have a little bit more of a, how would you say, an entrepreneurial pursuit. How would you react to that statement? Well, there's only really three countries in the world left that still use winter, winter past, uh, first 
first past the post. First, <laughs> right. first past the post. Which is defined, first past the post is defined that um, the party that has the most elected representatives wins the ability to represent you in government. It doesn't necessarily state that the majority of the people voted for that party, but that they're representatives. And, and would you not, well, I gotta let you answer first of all the, the first question about, about the, the cities. But when someone, uh, when someone votes in a small mining town in Northern Ontario, which is valid and important, their vote for their constituent to represent a huge tract of land. Should that person have the same amount of power as someone in Ontario who uh, represents, let us say, the downtown core of Bay Street and what those people are? I mean, we get into these problems. Um, I mean, the proportionality and how votes count in, in terms of one region versus another is not going to change under proportional representation. I mean, the rural vote is not going to be swamped, and the people in, in Toronto are not going to be able to overrule everyone else across the country. I mean, we have constitutional um, guidelines that are in place that each province has to have X number of MPs. That's not going to change. Uh, what we're going to do is basically um, ensure, you know, within, a, within each province, which ends up being somewhat proportional across the country, is that votes, uh, whatever party, whatever votes they get, they're going to get seats that are roughly in proportion to that. And the reason... But how do you do that when you say, when you say that you're going to have the same amount of MPs, you're going to have to increase something because the Liberals won in the federal election, the Conservatives did not. We had a sweep in the Peel region. We were all blue in Brampton and Mississauga in the right. region of Peel, practically all blue. Now we're all red. The blues are not represented, they were voted out. How are they to have a seat at the same time when we elected, or the people of Peel elected the the liberals the problem is is that we have these silos that we vote in I mean the writings are virtual silos and so if you're if you live in one of these writings and it happens to be a safe writing that happens to be blue or green or or red or whatever and you don't and everyone else in that writing wants wants it to be this this person, but that's not the party you support, uh, your vote just drops off the table. Now, how proportional representation works is that you have multiple MPs per riding. Now, let's, let's, let's hold that point for, tech for a sec because uh, we'll be able to address that when we come back. We're talking to Pat McGrail. We're talking to Pat because she represents Fair Vote Peel. And we're talking about propor proportional voting representation, which the Liberals are talking are going to happen in 2019. My name is Michael A. Charbon. You're watching Brampton Focus. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back to Brampton Focus. We're talking to Pat McGrail and we're talking about proportional representation, the, the potential of uh, voter reform in 2019 brought in by the Liberals. Pat, what, I, I think I want to get from you the salient definition of what, what proportional representation will do and how that differs to, as you say, those lost votes. Right, okay, now the simplest way to perhaps illustrate it, if I take one system, there's different systems that you can achieve that proportionality, but I think the simplest one to explain um, is single transferable vote. Um, so in your example of uh, Peel, uh, Mississauga and Brampton, if, for example, if you took those 11 ridings and you made them into one riding and you elected 11 MPs for that one big riding. Now, if you look at the way the votes came out in the last election, I believe the Liberals, even though they won all 11 seats, I believe they still did not, on the whole, get 50% of that region. That's correct. I think they got 38 or 39, something like that. Yeah. Well, it may be a little bit more than that, Peel. I can't remember exactly. Oh, but, in Peel, yeah, that's... But in, yeah, but in any event, so... But the Liberals won. They won the majority vote. I want, I want to hear what your definition is of those conservatives who lost or voted conservatives and how you're going to make their vote count. Well, as I said, if you had one big riding for Peel and you elected 11 MPs, they would not all be liberal because they would break down in accordance with the popular vote within Peel. 
So if if the if the liberals, I don't understand. How do you mean the popular vote in Peel? Because oh. the, the you vote in a riding and you vote for who you want to represent you in that riding. The majority of the people in that riding voted for X, and X was voted in. Otherwise, you're you're never going to have a decisive decision. Then you're going to have. 30, uh, 30 representatives because you're going to represent everybody and then that defeats the whole purpose. This is the crux of the problem, is the riding boundaries. What I'm suggesting is you get rid of the riding boundaries and you amalgamate all 11 ridings into one. And then you use a ranked ballot in order to select 11 MPs. So collectively, you think that this society will go bonkers. They have a hard enough time opening up a mayonnaise jar, for God's sakes. I mean, Fred Flintstone sometimes is the lowest denominator. How are you going to get people to? I mean, uh, we just added a whole bunch of ridings to uh, to Brampton and to Mississauga to increase the ability for the constituents to be able to represent themselves. I don't think Canadians, uh, you know, are dumb. I mean, 90 countries managed to do this. And I think people get a lot more engaged when they think that their vote is going to count. Um, and if you have more choices than the one that is in that particular riding, I mean, you don't have a lot of choice. You've got three candidates. If you had a larger riding and you knew that you were going to elect more than one MP in that riding, chances are you would be able to elect at least one MP. So let's leave federal, federalism for a second, because I think that's, that's a bailiwick that uh, is not going to get addressed. Municipally, how would uh, a more proportional representation work from a municipal standpoint? And probably a little more uh, a little less of a challenge to get going. Um, I, well, I don't know whether it is less of a challenge or not, but essentially it's the same problem. I mean, the problem with our first-past-the-post system is these artificial boundaries. And in, in the municipalities, you've got wards and, that create boundaries. So, um, and people only are going to elect one MP within But those that boundaries are set are for financial, economic, industrial. Those boundaries were set up to identify locales um, that have special needs and special considerations. That's why you have those boundaries. If you eliminate the boundaries, then it's like all of Ontario, where all of Ontario does not share the same, uh, uh, the same concerns, hence why we elect different people. Well, I think, um, I mean, as a result of those boundaries, the councillors elected in each one of those boundaries are only responsible to the people in that ward. And, you know, we've seen in the last election, um, you know, they basically, if, on a citywide basis, they may have support of, say, 3% of the population. So it's just that pre 3% that they have to cater to. Yeah, but if you live in that 3%, you want that representative to represent you. I don't care what happens uh, three neighborhoods away because their garbage collection is their thing. I care about my writing, hence why I voted that representative in. You're trying, you're trying, if I believe, more of a whitewash. It's a represent everybody and make everybody happy. Well, no. Uh, we need to make decisions. Which decisions impact us the most? Uh, you know, fixing the pothole down the street or making a decision about transit. Transit is a citywide decision. And we need our councillors responsible to the city, not the 3% in their riding or in their ward. And that's the problem because they can make decisions on a citywide basis that affect everybody in the city. But they only have to get go to that three percent in their ward and to get reelected, so they're really not accountable to the city uh, very much. I mean, if, if they're supported by three percent of the city, they're not accountable to the other ninety-seven percent. Well, th so how would it work in the city if I'm the representative from uh, the riding where the LRT is going to go down, and everybody in my constituency doesn't want it, and everybody around doesn't care what my constituents feel because of their housing prices are going to go down and accelerate traffic the rest of the city doesn't care about it because you know you're only representing that riding you have to represent that riding otherwise those people they don't get their voice here how would that work in the city then well, it, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily have to have one big ward for the entire city. I mean, you could have, you know, the uh, split into three or four sections and so that you would elect, uh, you know, multiple councillors per ward. 
But again, that LRT doesn't just affect the people in the particular neighborhood that it goes through. It affects the entire city. Yeah, but it so affects them first. It, it, it affects them first because one of, the, one of the problems they had with the LRT was that people were saying they're going to lose property value. They're going to uh, lose uh, access coming in. Whereas others said, for the benefit of the whole city, you have to address that. We, we've got about 30 seconds. Left. When we come back, I want to talk about um, ranked ballots okay. uh, because you brought that uh, point up, Pat, and that's interesting where you put on a ballot your uh, first choice and your second choice. So that's interesting. Also, uh, interesting how, how several other countries have taken this and many of our uh, organized, or I should say, uh, more entrepreneurial countries have not. So interesting. We're talking to Pat McGrail. We're talking about fair vote peel. And we're talking about proportional representation. My name is Michael A. Charbon. You're watching Brampton Focus. When we return with Pat with our final segment, we'll continue our discussion. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Brampton Focus. My name is Michael A. Charbon. We're talking about proportional representation. We've got uh, Pat McGrail here from Fair Vote Peel. Uh, when we left, and this being our last segment, we talked about what would it take for a municipality to look at this? What are some of the challenges and, and how do you see a municipality uh, starting that discussion? Well, first of all, we need enacting legislation, um, and that has to come from the province. We're expecting that legislation to come from the province next month. Um, and then once we have that, then of course, we've got to get the city on side with implementing it. Um, I, we're expecting the legislation will include uh, possibilities for a citizen referendum in order to push city council to do this. So you're talking about the Liberal government, the Liberal Ontario government, the uh, Liberal with, uh, Kathleen Wynne. Now you also solicited a whole bunch of mayors and contacted them and asked um, uh, these mayors who would be in favor of uh, legislative voting reform uh, with uh, more proportional representation. What kind of a response did you get from the mayors that you sent this out to? Okay, this was in connection with the last municipal election yep. in Peel, and I sent out emails to all the candidates in Peel, um, the mayoral candidates and the councillor candidates, everyone. Um, I did get a response from Linda Jeffrey, and she was not in, fav in favour of uh, ranked ballot or proportional representation in uh, Peel. Um, I did not get a response from Bonnie Crombie, and off the top of my head I can't remember uh, what other responses that so I got. So you mentioned the word ranked ballot. Uh, we talked about that briefly before um, we left in our last um, segment. A uh, ranked ballot would be that you would uh, place your vote for your first choice and you would vote for your second choice. And there was a feeling with this uh, proportional representation that that would give people greater power to elect more people that are reflective of their opinion. Okay, and, and this there's confusion in terminology. Uh, rank ballot is commonly used, but actually it's only one element in a voting system. And so rank ballot can be used either in a winner-take-all system in which you only are electing one one member per ward or one member per riding. Or you could have it, as I explained earlier, uh, in, a, in a system called single transferable vote, uh, where you're electing multiple members uh, for a ward or a riding. So that's another tool, if you wish. Is, it, is, is not all of this discussion, regardless of proportional representation, regardless of first past the post, is it not all about voter apathy? If we got more people to get out and vote, first past the post would just be as effective, would it not? No, it wouldn't, because all you would do is increase the number of people who do not elect anyone. You're, the problem is the boundaries and the fact that our votes are caught up in these silos. And if you don't, you aren't successful in electing someone of your choice in that particular silo, your vote just drops off the table. But if we, if we look, I, I mean, I, I, there has to be winners and losers. I mean. In in today's society, there's everybody gets a participation uh, medal now instead of a winner or a loser. If you want uh, marijuana for medical use, you vote this color. If you don't want uh, medical marijuana, you vote for this color. If more people voted for that color, I don't think your vote is lost. It is just that your vote was not the majority. 
No, the system is rigged so that votes are lost. If across the city of Brampton, uh, I mean, it, it, the, the results are going to be far different. If you took an election across the city of Brampton, whether they pro-marijuana or anti-marijuana, it's going to be a whole lot different is if you just take the results from ward by ward. The, the, the boundaries cause the problem. And so, so I want to come back to the boundaries. You said that before. Think of what would be the cost increment? What would be, I mean, if you're talking about uh, changing boundaries, first of all, there's, there's a whole trella law that you got to go through. And I could just imagine the wonderful red tape and all the cost. Second of all, the, the point is um, you, you would have more counselors. It would cost us more because you would have more people representing more opinions. No, no, you would not have any more counselors. You would be electing more than one counselor per ward, but the ward would be much bigger. So you could take the, what do we have, 10 or 11 councillors now? Yeah. And, and and you would elect, say you had four wards that you elected three I in think, each ward. I think, Pat, it's very interesting. I want to give you just with a couple of minutes left here, I want to give you an opportunity to speak directly to the folks uh, who watch Brampton Focus on a regular basis right. and, and, and tell them um, how they can get more information and how they can participate with uh, Fair Vote Peel. Okay. We're, we're, we're part of a national organization, uh, Fair Vote Canada. We're a grassroots Roots Citizens Coalition across the country promoting proportional representation across the country. Across the country, um, we have a very good tabloid uh, that is available online. Our website is fairvote.ca. Um, lots of good information there. We have a Facebook page, a PR discussion in Canada. That you, experts are there that you can go in and ask questions. We have an event coming up um, at the end of this month on January the 31st uh, in Mississauga at the Promenade Gallery at which we're going to have a very good speaker, uh, Professor Dennis Pilon from York University um, who is you know known as an expert on electoral systems across Canada. Um, so people are welcome to come to that. Um, you can look for the um, go on to Eventbrite and look for Oh, it's electoral reform, uh, a discussion with Fair Vote Peel on the Eventbrite site. But that's uh, an opportunity to come out and ask your questions. You know, it's it's wonderful, Pat. I, I commend you in your effort and uh, the people on your Fair Vote Peel team. Um, it is a difficult subject to get a hold of. It is a subject which is going to gain a lot more attention as we uh, march forward to 2019. But I think what you're doing is a great is a great thing, particularly from an information standpoint. What's the hardest thing that you find? Uh, to communicate to folks at home about what it is that you're representing? Um, they get a lot of misinformation from other sources. <laughs> the concept is pretty simple and actually when we talk to groups of people and they get an opportunity to ask questions, we don't have much difficulty in convincing people that this is the way to go and that they will have better uh, accountable government and more representative government um, if their votes actually elect people that they want to see in government. And this is the problem. And so it, it's getting the message out there and getting the opportunity to talk to a people. Lot more to discussion time necessary and a lot more things to talk about. Uh, Pat McGrail, I thank you so much for being here on Brampton Focus. Appreciate you taking your time. Again, we'd like to thank Pat McGrail for being here and Fair Vote Peel, and of course for you for watching Brampton Focus. My name is Michael A. Charbon. Thanks for watching.